Uh, dear students, you are welcome to another lesson. My name is Moses Wanchiri. Today we are going to discuss anticonvulsants. And we are going to follow the following objectives. One, we are going by the end of this session, you are expected to be able to define and conversions. You are also expected to be able to describe the types of and conversions. You are also you expected to be able to describe the various mechanisms of action of the and conversions. And then we shall end up by discussing the general considerations uh, for use of anticonvulsants. Now, anticonvulsants are medicines or they are drugs that are used to treat epileptic seizures and hence the synonym antiepileptics. Now, anticonvulsants are used to normalize the abnormal electrical activity in the brain which really reduces uh, uh, increases the risk for somebody having seizures anticonvulsants are not used for that purpose only in in some instances anticonvulsants are used during the treatment of neuropathic pains these are pains that are caused by damage to the uh, central nervous system, the nervous system or the nerves. And some uh, anticonvulsants are also used as mood stabilizers. In other words, they are used to treat psychiatric disorders such as bipolar affective disorder. Another growing use of anticonvulsants is the treatment of the migraine, the migraine headache. So some anticonvulsants are also used in the treatment of the migraine headache. And at the same time, there are no medicine, uh, there, 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 there is no one medicine or no one uh, anti-convulsant that is denoted or that is, dominates for uh, effectiveness. So in other words, all uh, anti-convulsants usually are effective. There is none that really dominates others in the effectiveness. You realize that different patients really uh, ref respond differently to a similar drug and all of them, you find that one that does not work for this person may work for the other. So there is no drug that really dominates. Now, our choice of what uh, uh, particular anticonvulsant to use, therefore, does not re really depend on the effectiveness, but it depends on, one, the side effects that one should avoid when using a particular anticonvulsant. Maybe another consideration can be the convenience for use. If at all the, it, the, the type of anticonvulsant is convenient for the person to use, and then the cost effectiveness, does the person afford the drug or the medicine? And then the physician is experienced. So it is important to know that anticonvulsants work for all the seizure types. And then we have the anticonvulsants that are considered to be narrow spectrum anticonvulsants. And these ones work mostly for a specific type of seizures, such as partial seizures, which are sometimes called the, 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 the focal, and the, the absence of myoclonic seizures. Those are the narrow anticonvulsants. But we have broad spectrum and convulsants these ones work in a broad range of uh, types of uh, uh, epileptics 
types of epilepsy. Now, some of the examples of the narrow spectrum and convulsants are such drugs like the phenytoin, we have the phenobarbital, we have the carbamazepine, which is sometimes called the uh, tegrito, we have the uh, okize carbamazepine, then we have the gabapentin, then we have the pregabalin, and some others. So those are narrow spectrum and conversion. But we have also the broad spectrum anti convulsants and some of these ones are like the valproic acid then we have the lamotrigin then we have the topelamate and others so those are broad spectrum and convulsants in other words they work at a, a, a bigger range of the the several types of uh, the um, epilepsy. Now let us talk about the mechanism of action of most of these antipsychotics, anti and convulsants. Now the anti convulsants work in several ways. They are those ones that work by inhibiting the sodium channel. Mm? They work by inhibiting the sodium channel. And when they even the sodium channel, they prevent repetitive firing by selectively prolonging the inactivity of the sodium channel in a rapidly firing neurons. So these neurons that are firing the electro the electro impulses very fast. These, the, these type of anticonvulsants, they prevent the, the, or they inhibit the firing of the electron impulses by blocking the sodium channel. And therefore, when they block the sodium channel, that means that the impulse then will not cross. And impulses that would go very fast, it will become abnormal or even go beyond the threshold and cause a seizure then they are halted, and therefore the seizure is prevented from occurring. And the, some of the example of the uh, sodium channel mediator, ex, uh, sodium channel inhibitors are the phenytoin, we have the carbamazepine, we have the valproic acid, and the, the uh, lamotrigine. Then we have also other drugs that also enhance the GABA-mediated inhibition. You know, as you could be aware, GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. In other words, it works as a break. You remember, you could be, maybe I request you to imagine all this running automobile. Either a bicycle is not an automobile, but a bicycle, for example, if you consider like a motorcycle, which is an automobile, a motorcycle, all vehicles, and every moving uh, uh, object that is being driven, you find that in order for somebody to be able to control it, it must have a brake. And therefore, God also made us, when the brain is working, it has a break, and that break helps us to navigate through events and be able to do things successfully and be able to understand things the way we are supposed to understand them and have particular times when the brain must stop and then it rests. So this inhibitory transmitter is the GABA. The GABA is the gamma aminobuteric acid. And this one helps as an inhibitory neurotransmitter. And therefore, if the GABA is activated or enhanced, then it will be able to stop the brain firing of impulses or maybe to function at a speed that is not 
not required. And such drugs are those ones that even cause sedation. Did you know that sometimes, not even sometimes, in the evening, there is always, always in enhancement of the GABA? And since there is enhancement of the GABA, we tend to, 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 to be sleepy in the evenings. And therefore, if we inhibit the brain using medication, then that firing of the impulses that we are not required at that time will be cut off. And therefore, the brain will calm down. And therefore, this GABA uh, enhancement or activation or the, 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 break, the GABA that helps to break the brain when it is enhanced, it helps in relieving anxiety because the brain is very anxious. It releases the anxiety, it relieves the anxiety, it reduces stress, then it promotes sleep, and then it, pre it prevents even brain damage. How do you think we would be if there was no GABA and we work 24 hours to make a 48 hours and then 72 without resting? If there was no GABA, we would just be working like that. And then this would, of course, cause brain damage. And therefore, the GABA is very important. So when we enhance the GABA, then we prevent brain damage. Then we also allow the person to rest. So such medicines that enhance the GABA uh, or they promote the GABA activity are the benzodiazepines. We have, for example... We have the diazepam, we have the alprazolam, we have the lorazepam, we have the clonazepam. All those ones help to enhance the GABA activity. And these ones are very good at managing seizures. Then, the side effects probably, if a person uses these GABA enhancement drugs for a long time, which are beyond the prescription, then the person is likely to have withdrawal symptoms when he stops using the drug. Otherwise, the other effect will be just be sedation. Then, the third mechanism are those ones that inhibit the T-type calcium channel. And these T-type calcium channel are present in the hypothalamus. And in the hypothalamus is where the place where the absence seizures are generated. So, in case the T-type channel, uh, calcium channels are inhibited, then the absence seizures will not occur. So, uh, the examples of such T-type uh, calcium channels blockers are the valproate or valprenic acid or the ethoxamide, ethoxamide. So, those are the three mechanisms of the anti-convulsants that we are discussing today. Then, what are the things that we need to consider while using anti-convulsants? One of the things we have to consider is that, as you know, Drugs or medicines have both a brand name and a generic name. Brand name are usually specific, yeah, and they are known by the manufacturer and the other people. But the generic names can be the name of the chemical in which uh, from uh, where the drug is, is made. And now, if we are using generic medicines then we need to watch out that we use generic medicine from the same manufacturer because as you could be knowing generic medicines may vary in the active ingredients and therefore the variations in the active ingredients in the drug may hamper or may make a seizure control 
difficult. Otherwise, it would be better for somebody to use the brand names. But the brand names are also known to be more expensive and the generic names are cheaper. But when you are using a generic name then we, or a generic drug, then we need to ensure that the drug is manufactured by the same person. Otherwise, if we change from generic drug to another generic drug, there is a tendency of having varying uh, chemical uh, chemical ingredients and therefore we may end up with the uh, problems of seizure control. Then as usual when we are starting a medicine, let us start our shadow slowly. Although this one tends to make us to not to, to delay the helping on seizures, but otherwise it is better, it is good practice to start uh, slowly to minimize the side effects of the drug. So it is not, uh, it may not be good for us to start with a high dose and more frequently. It is always better to begin slowly in order to avoid side effects of the drug. Then some anticonvulsants have approval for monotherapy. In other words, some anticonvulsants have approval to be used alone, while others are used as adjuvants or added on therapy. So it is important for the person uh, to understand whether the drug is approved to be used alone or to be used in combination with others. Otherwise, even those ones that are approved to be used alone can be used single for case by case basis where a person really uh, has been found to be responding to that drug well. So it is always important to understand the, the manufacturer's recommendation of the, uh, of the medicine before we use it either as a monotherapy or as a, a combination. Then we need also to ensure that we achieve the normal blood level of the chemical that is supposed to, to, to suppress the seizures or to raise the threshold of the seizures. This one can be done in the lab by testing how much drug is uh, in, the, in the blood. But as you could be knowing, uh, uh, labs vary in the way they measure, this, uh, they, they, they carry out these tests. That one may not even give us a, a proper picture of the blood, the, the blood level. Otherwise, we can use other, uh, 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 these, uh, other parameters to understand this. For example, we can use types uh, to, to observe the patient for the type and the number of seizures. We also observe the side effects. And then whether the person is taking one type of medication versus the, the multiple. So when we observe some of these things, they can really give us an impression of what the blood, the, the blood level of the drug is. Then we have also to be curious and be observant to the side effects that the person is getting. Some of our patients, when they are having side effects of such the medications or during the anti-convulsant therapy, patients may complain of fatigue, they may complain of dizziness, they may complain of unsteadiness, they may walk while they are staggering, they may complain of uh, brow division, stomach upset, sometimes they may complain of headache, although the headache can also be caused by the seizure, but sometimes it is also side effects of the medication. Then, uh, reduced resistance to cold, then uh, memory and thinking problem, 
then sometimes uh, weight gain may also occur. So we need to observe those ones. Then sometimes some of these medicines may affect the internal organs and it will be uh, noted that all seizure medicines can cause problems with blood count, especially the white blood cells, the red blood cells, and platelets. And sometimes they may cause damage to the liver and the other internal organs. So while a person is taking the anticonvulsants, we need to watch out for this. For that matter, we need, therefore, to take uh, blood tests as a baseline before the person is initiated the medication. And then subsequent blood tests can be done as the person goes along with the medication. This one gives us a, a picture of what the drug is possibly affecting the body or whether the patient is getting a side effect of the drug or not. Then another thing that we have to watch out Patients who are, are using anticonvulsants have an increased risk for developing anxiety and depression. And therefore, suicidality has been associated so much by anticonvulsants. For, so for that matter, we need to always assess for the symptoms of suicide among the patients who are taking anticonvulsants. And the other thing, and last probably, what we have to discuss, is that although anticonvulsants are called antiepileptics, they are not a cure for epilepsy. So for that matter, we need to counsel our patients that the medicine they are taking are used to suppress seizures, but they are not used to cure the seizures. That's very important. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have come to the end of our session of anticonvulsants. And in this uh, uh, lesson, we've talked about, we have defined the anticonvulsants. We have described the types of anticonvulsants. We have also talked about the various mechanisms of action of different anticonvulsants. And we have also discussed the general consideration when using anticonvulsants. So, as usual, we shall have an assignment. Among the uh, medicines that are mentioned above, pick two medicines from those ones according to the mechanism of action. We want to pick medis uh, two medicines that work by inhibiting the sodium channel. And then we pick two from the GABA enhancement drugs. And then the T-type calcium channel inhibitors. We want to pick two from each group and then write the dosage for an adult dosage for an adult for two of the mechanisms that have been discussed for that matter we are having we are expected to have about six statements for this matter we are going to pick two medicines from each of the mechanism of action and then we write the adult doses and probably we need also to write the side effect that are for each of the drugs that you have written so i expect you to write anticonvulsants then after writing anticonvulsants i need your name i need your student number and then you write medicines two from each mechanism of action and therefore we are talking about the GABA enhancement uh, drugs we are talking about the inhibitor of the t-type calcium channel and the inhibitor of the sodium channel mediated excited excitation 
Thank you very much. And I expect to meet you again in the next discussion. Thank you.